Lindsay, you're looking good, my friend. What's your secret? I bet you say that to all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I, I want to talk to you about everything. What, what, how you train, uh, what you eat, how you live to... Mike. I don't know if it's 94 or not. Is it, is it, is the it, is secret it is that clean living, and I hate it. Um, <laughs> I've just been lucky with life. Um, I don't make any decisions. The decisions all made for me. And that's why I'm here, actually. The, uh, I had no intention of buying the boat that I bought. So you, what uh, you're saying to me is just fate that you ended up with a boat and you just follow the, the signs and that's the way yes. your life has been led. I had no idea that I was going to buy one. Yeah. So did it bring back yeah. memories of being in the Navy? Because uh, you fought in World War Two, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to get you on to have a talk to you, being Anzac oh, Day and all. Well, I was in the Army first. Uh, I was in the Army, what, 16, 17? I was 16. Uh, but before I went, was in the Army, you could get into the Navy at 17. So, of course, I... Right, so you lied about your that, age to get in. Yeah, but unfortunately. A lot, of, a lot um, of young guys did that then. Why did everyone want to be in the Army so much and fight for the country? Well, is, is, it, is it because... It was wartime then and people were di digging uh, trenches. Uh, it was... Uh, quite serious that we were going to be taken over by Japan. Hey, mate, so what, what would be uh, one of the hairy moments you remember? And where were you actually stationed? Uh, first of all, it was at uh, Pakapunyal, because the 7th Divi had just come back from the Middle East. Uh, Singapore has just, had just fallen. Did you see any action, uh, is, is sort of what I was leading to? Not, not with the army. The... Uh, the uh, platoon I was with, uh, they're all sent to New Guinea, but for some reason or other, again, fate, I was put into the officer's training corps. So I didn't go to New Guinea, like the others did. Uh, um, so when the Navy claimed me, I was still in, still in the Army. Do you remember back to Pakapanyal and uh, when you first got stationed on that ship in the Navy, what was the camaraderie like and, uh, you know, the feeling amongst all the men on the ship and in Pakapanya, and, and how did you all support each other? Um, uh, lots of stories. They, uh, possibly the uh, main contacts were Navy contacts. Uh, from the Navy, they claimed me in Mosman for a while. The first ship I was on... I disliked it intensely. It was a, um, a training ship for um, uh, anti-submarine, all the latest gear. Lindsay, your uh, memory is incredible. I don't know how you're remembering all this. I can't remember what I did yesterday. But what, what I really want to know is, is what was it like alongside all of the other soldiers, all the other men were at war with Japan, the, the, the world is in mayhem. Uh, how were you all handling it? Were you handling it with senses of humour, practic practical jokes? Were you all just, you know, being the best friends you could possibly be? I, I just want to try and well, give a bit of a feeling to, you know, young kids out there or millennials that might be watching this and, and thinking, okay, we're going through a pandemic right now and we have to stay home. Like, what, what right, was it so, like for you? Well, we didn't... Uh, we refuelled and uh, uh, stores from... We didn't see any shore time, uh, so we were at sea for a couple of years at least, and and I can't remember any discord happening at all on the board the ship. Do you have any fond yeah. memories of all the uh, the guys, the uh, newfound friends that you had working alongside you in the army and the navy? Uh, I can remember some of their, some of their names at times. Uh, I can remember what they look like. Um, I can remember one fellow called Dim Sim. His name was Sim. Of course, he, and of course, with a name like Sim, it'd have to be Dim Sim. He was a survivor of the Katoomba, uh, which was another corvette which had been sunk. And uh, I can picture him quite vividly. He I, must have had I some good that. stories. Do you remember him telling you about the Katoomba being sunk? No, we didn't. Strangely enough, we don't talk about those sort of things. I, I don't know why, but um, experiences that we have that's regarding w where you yourself might have 
been in action or, t or participated. Uh, for some reason or other, we don't talk about it. Do you think that's talk part about of the Anzac spirit where you, you've had these horrific things that you've had to deal with and you just carry it with you, but you soldier on and you support your mates? I think that must be. The, I know some, some people here, uh, particularly one that I've become good friends from here. He's a SAS officer for 27 years uh, and his experiences were absolutely horrific in lots of cases. But the actual action part, um, you tend to lose your memory, and, or rather I do. And, um, do you think you lose your memory uh, or are you just blocking it out? I think you just lose your memory about it. The, see, talking to you, that's the first time I've uh, thought about that sort of thing for, I can't remember even thinking about it in the past. It, just, it was just part of it happening. So uh, <laughs> what, what, is, what does the Anzac spirit mean to you, the Australian New Zealand Army Corps? Do you, do you still think about it with fond memories and, it, and, uh, and yes. I mean, obviously you've got your medals there. You, can we have a look at them and can you tell us a little bit about them and what the Anzac yeah, spirit means to you? Everything that happens, it is quite moving. Uh, it tends to bring back thoughts and memories that again that you don't think about uh, hopefully uh, attending the parades you are hoping that you're going to meet up with past past people that you knew what's that like when you're walking along you know it might be george street in sydney or queen street in brisbane as a part of the anzac day parade what, what do you feel at, like what, what's, what's going times, through your mind at times the you, there's the, the crowd um, are clapping and saying thank you, good on you, and all that sort of thing. So at times you tend to just accept the crowd. And then after that, you try and look up past, past mates or comrades or somebody who was on the same ship or in the same area. You try to look for them and try and find them. Yes, it's very important to the nation. It's very important. Uh, it does bring in memories. Why, why do you think it is important that, that people remember the Anzacs and remember war? I mean, personally, I think it's to remind us of the, the horrible things that people like you had to go through. And so it never happens again. What do you think? The importance is um, the memories of events such as that. Um, I'm thinking back now to f the First World War events that are uh, singular uh, events that have become historic, such as the charge of Bathsheba, uh, the Somme. Um, these are single events, but a lot more happened, was happening and happening, awful stuff that was happening apart from those, uh, but the ANZAC tends to recognise what did happen and the uh, importance of belonging to one nation, perhaps, or a group, or belonging. But, uh, so that's, yeah. that's really the Australian nature, isn't it? It's the Anzac spirit, it's the Australian way of life. If we're going through an epidemic like we are right now with COVID-19, the bushfires, the floods, World War II, Vietnam, whatever it is. As Australians, we band together and it seems to be quite a common thing that everyone's saying we're in this together. And that's what it was like back then. And to go through something so horrible, but to finally see the light at the end when you heard that the war was over, where were you? And do you remember that moment? Unfortunately, um, on the ship that I was on, we were in the different part of the world and we didn't celebrate anything whatsoever. At that time, we were doing uh, mine, mine sweeping. We were called back from Tarakan and uh, doing the mine sweeping up to, it used to be Formosa, uh, now Taiwan. And so uh, we had to uh, clear uh, for the ships to go into Hong Kong 
and so it was just work as normal. Just back back uh, to work as normal. You had a job to do, so you couldn't really lose focus. Otherwise, you yeah, might have hit yeah. one of those mines. What what did you have to do with the yeah. mines? Was it your your job to actually pull them out of the water or find them? What were you doing? Well, they, well the Ballarat hit hit one going in. Uh, the, the stern, fortunately, it could be repaired after a period of time. Oh, you were on a boat. You were on the Ballarat, and you got hit by a mine. I was on the Bathurst, and the Ballarat was in front of us. We, when we finished sweeping it in the day, the finish of the day, uh, we'd be what you call li- line ahead, where one ship is behind the other at a, at a distance, not very far distance. And um, uh, the Ballarat was the leading ship, and um, they got this one on the stern. Uh, it was blown but it was repaired at after a period of time. So um, you would have heard that on on your boat, even though the, you were one boat behind. What was the feeling like when you, another boat struck by a landmine? I think I think if you think to yourself, oh, geez, aren't we lucky? <laughs> so so uh, aren't we lucky? They're unlucky, but yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah. Stiff mate. Yeah. And where were, where were those landmines? Was that was that off the coast of Western Australia? Did you say? Uh, uh, this this particular lot was uh, between um, the uh, China coast, right right up the China coast, and um, and at that time, uh, China uh, was still occupied by J- Japan in lots of places. As an example. Uh, we had to get the prisoners out of Stanley Prisoner of War and um, Prisoner of War Camp. Crazy times, my friend. And, uh, you know, you went through it. Thank you for your service and, and everything that you did go through. And uh, I, uh, I can't, can't even imagine. I mean, the stories we put, put out a, uh, a great outline as, as to uh, what it would have been like to go through. But it's, uh, you know, a lot lost for words right now of, of what it would be like to go through an actual war. I mean, we're going through a pandemic now. We've been through bushfires and floods, but it's, uh, it's just nothing compared to what you went through. Uh, but war, war nowadays is bloody awful.